Hello everybody and welcome to episode 3 of the 43rd Minute Review Show. I'm just back inside after being caught in a shower so I'm looking a little bit wet. But we are dedicated here to bringing you the brand new reviews of the week and what is also out there and still good, which is a new feature of the show this week. So, let's get started, shall we? First off, we have the new one from David Cronenberg. This is Cosmopolis, starring Robert Patterson mainly, Juliette Binoche and Paul Giamatti, to name a few. It's quite an ensemble cast, so it's too long a list to name everyone. Now, the problem with Cosmopolis is that it's really hard to define, so it's really hard to put it into the categories that we normally do. But everybody gets judged here by the categories, so we'll jump into everything as it comes. So the first category is technical. Every technical aspect of the thing is of the films are analysed. So the, so the technical aspects of this film is that it is really well shot and you can't really expect anything less from David Cronenberg. The only problem is that it gets really boring and tedious because it's mainly set in a car and despite some nice shots and some nice angles it just never really elevates it beyond anything that you can do in a stretched limousine and for that it actually becomes really really boring and because of other factors of the film it's it's a really difficult watch. Uh, the second as aspect is the acting and Robert Patterson is good. Everybody is good in it but it's again it's really hard to class as acting because it's not technical scripts, it's not anything to do with that. It's a real mishmash. You'd have to actually watch it to understand. And that comes on to the third section, which is plot. Now, there isn't a plot in this film. It's all set of a guy getting in a car to go and get his hair cut. And basically, apart from one little bit at the end with Paul Giamatti, which is completely unexplained, you've got this car ride, and you've got Robert Patterson and all these other people coming in and out. And basically, same plot and acting is that there is no plot and there is no acting because it's just a series of philosophical statements which some of them are interesting, most of them are nonsensical, but it's really, really boring. It sounds like a game, like somebody reading from a comic book, less than a script, like just a random statements and it's just, uh, it's just not good at all. Um, and then the fourth aspect, which is uh, commercial viability, I, I don't know how you could sell this film. I honestly don't. It's probably the worst film I've seen in a long time. It has got Robert Patterson in it, but this would not even appeal to people who like Twilight because the dialogue, despite the rubbish dialogue in Twilight, this is worse. This this has no dialogue. It's just, it's just statements. It's just a series of statements. And if you can keep up with it, then good. But if you're feeling slightly tired like I was when I went to see it, you're never going to never going to keep up with it. It's just or understand what the hell's going on. Who knows? So, and our personal opinion is that it was really boring, really stupid, and like pretentious. Like it was really, really up there in the most pretentious films I've ever seen. And Gemma looked like she was going to punch somebody when she came out of the cinema. So, yes, it is bad, and it's definitely getting the lowest score we've given any film so far. Uh, but it all, and also a lot of explanation because it needs a lot of explanation as to why it's bad. But here you go. So the first uh, first uh, rating of the day, Cosmopolis gets half a star. Four score and one day ago we went to see Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Uh, the new film from Temur Beckham Benter. I'm very sorry for my pronunciation of that guy's name. Starring Benjamin Walkie, Rufus Swells, and Dominic Cooper. Now, let's jump straight into the categories. And first off, we have the technical aspects. And anybody who is a fan of the of 300 will understand what I mean by uh, the fight scenes and the sequences and stuff like that. This Abraham Lincoln is very, very much like that. A lot of slow motion, a lot of running, and weird warped voices and stuff like that. Um, and it is cool. It's not as boring as I found 300. It's def there's definitely some fun moments, probably because you're getting to see Abraham Lincoln kill vampires. Now, that's a big thumbs up from me. And anybody who likes those films will probably love this. Uh, the next category is acting, and everybody is perfectly adequate. Nobody is stepping out of the bag. The guy who plays Abraham Lincoln, I think that's Benjamin Walkie, not entirely sure. He uh, he's really good at playing Abraham Lincoln, and everybody is really really good at it. And it's a 
it's a, an interesting, interesting film. Next up, we have plot. Now, anybody who's going in to expect this film to be insanely si silly is going to be slightly disappointed because I went in hoping that it was going to be as stupid as it can get, but it's actually got some quite serious undertones dealing with the things like um, slavery, uh, this, uh, the Civil War in America. It's definitely got an interesting take on the Battle of Gettysburg. Uh, towards the, in the middle and at the end, uh, so <laughs> you will, you will, anybody who's got, who kind of likes people messing with history will probably love this film, uh, but anybody who's expecting it to be really stupid might be slightly disappointed, but trust me it does have some properly stupid moments in it, so you'll be happy with that. Next up we have Commercial Viability. Now this film is called Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. I actually don't know of any film ever with a more enticing name. I know that there's not any major actors in it, apart from Dominic Cooper, he's, slightly, he's probably the most famous name in there, but it's, you know, it's Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. It's amazing. Let's go and see that because it's about Abraham Lincoln fighting vampires. And, you know, so can't go wrong with that, I think. It's, it's brilliant. It's great. And uh, overall, our personal opinion of it would be it is stupid with slight serious moments in it, but overall enjoyable. Definitely an enjoyable film. Um, it's got a mishmash of it. It's maybe not as good as I thought it was going to be, and I don't know what Gemma thought of it because she <laughs> fell asleep in the middle of it. Uh, so you know we're kind of in the middle. So we're going to give it an in the middle. We're in the middle on everything really. So we're going to give it an in the middle-ish kind of score. We're going to three and a half out of five. Now we've got our new section which is still out there and either still good or worth avoiding where we give you a much more brief rundown of the films that have been out in the past couple of weeks. So first off we've got Red Lights by Rodrigo Cortez, a film about psychics and psychic fraud investigators starring Cillian Murphy, Sigourney Weaver and Robert De Niro. Now you'd think starring having an all-star cast like that that this film would be a surefire hit and I think it's quite a swing and a miss. It has a really interesting premise about psychic fraud investigators and it, that is genuinely interesting but there are far too many film styles crammed into one thing like Cortez is trying to do too many things at once and it feels really mismatched and disjointed with scenes which feel entirely out of place and it kind of, and it does actually really spoil the movie and for a film which has an interesting premise it has the most cop out filled ending I've seen in a while so we're gonna give it two and a half out of five purely for the fact that it d does have an interesting premise next up we have The Pact now The Pact is Nicholas McCarthy's horror film starring Katie Lollies and Casper Van Dien, I'm really sorry for my pronunciations again, I will practice them in the future. Uh, and it is a horror film and it's got, and it does have a really interesting premise. It's, it's a really good mystery story. It's the only problem for me is the fact that it falls into some serious, serious horror film cliches like having the blonde girl walking around with nothing but her pants on and stuff like that and the sort of bumbling gruff cop sort of coming to save the day you know and it feels really tired in that aspect and it's a shame because it is a really genuinely creepy and interesting story and I think that it, if it just with a little a couple of little rewrites it could have been really really good so we're gonna that one's worth watching though just for the premise so we'll give it three stars for that okay and finally and furthest back it came out we have a fantastic fear of anything. Now this one I'll just say, uh, this is Crispin Mells and Chris Hopeswell starring Simon Pegg. It's a Simon Pegg film. And I like Simon Pegg. And this is probably the most like classic Simon Pegg film you could see. It's very like spaced in the sense that it's sort of odd and obscure and it jumps by all over the place and there's like weird animations and everything like that. The only problem is that it we didn't think that it was really sure of what it wanted to be. It looked like it was trying to be something else other than what it was and because of that it felt kind of pointless in a way. But you know, it fans of space I think will really really get this film. So yeah, worth a watch if you are bored. 
But again, three stars. So, right, that's it. That's it for today. Let us know what you think, as always, of the films. And please, if you disagree with us, let us know. We love your disagreements. We love it. <laughs>